Hey guys, I'm Alan, and this is the 2019 Triumph Thruxton TFC. Beam, 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 beam. Then we do theme music, right? In our last Triumph video, I told you that we had some other Triumphs in the shop we were doing some custom work to, and this is one of them. Got another Bonneville here, but this is the 2019 Triumph Thruxton TFC. They made 750 of, the, of these, and this is number 113 of 750. This bike has 80 miles on it, and it came to us to get custom work done. Now, if you don't know what a TFC is, you should Google it, read up about it, because it's pretty damn cool. But this is a 1200cc Triumph Thruxton, which is really what they call the I think it's the Triumph Factory Custom, right? So TFC, Triumph Factory Custom. So they're putting out bikes with some special modifications made, limited number edition bikes, uh, which means you kind of get the bike that's tarted up from, from the factory instead of just getting the factory version of the bike. The high points are extra horsepower, lighter weight, cooler looking components, and some one-off pieces that you can't get for other models. So I'll get into the modifications we made, but I wanted you to be a little bit more familiar with the Triumph as it came from the factory. This particular bike then has carbon fiber fairing, carbon fiber tail section, carbon fiber heel guards. There's some internal bits that make it a little bit uh, lighter inside the motor. It has 11 extra horsepower, factory titanium exhaust, but as you can tell, we've already changed that to a different uh, exhaust made by Aero. Upgraded to Olin's cartridge, fully adjustable shocks in the front, uh, Olin's in the rear with uh, some pretty nice billet hardware on those. Billet custom triples with a uh, series number on the triple clamps. Adjustable levers for the clutch and brake. An upgraded front disc and upgraded calipers. Upgraded Brembo master cylinder for the front. A smoke windscreen, LED lighting, an aluminum engine uh, cradle. So apparently this is normally uh, steel and they've made that out of aluminum to help reduce weight. You've got these blacked out covers. Now, it's my opinion that typically a more vintage look is either a raw aluminum or a polished aluminum for the side covers, for the cam covers, as you saw from the bobber video. If you haven't seen the bobber video, you should probably watch that. So we did all that on the bobber, but now you've got the Struxton where the special edition has blacked out panels. And in my opinion, this is where we get into the kind of the critical piece. I think it's a little more modern looking and, and, and that's okay, I suppose, since you've got like golden Olin shocks and, and all those pieces. But anyway, stylistically speaking, I think this bike could benefit from having the same same color here, but maybe we'll pitch that to the client later. We also did a piggyback computer to help for tuning, to tune for the new exhaust, aero racing exhaust that's not technically street legal, and this damn thing sounds really, really mean. We've got more power, obviously, in addition to what Triumph had already done to the Thruxton. We've been able to tune and get more power out of it. We replaced the switches. Now, to replace the switch gear on a CAN bus motorcycle is not as straightforward as some might think. You've essentially got switches that, that are only communication switches uh, that are non-powered ostensibly, they're communication only. And we switched to a powered switch so we could use these better looking, um, these are Moto Gadget M switches that we've got installed. You know, in addition to paying a premium for this motorcycle, this particular client spent probably 40 hours more labor with us to change out those switches. That means new relays. And that, now we've gone, we're kind of retrograding some of the electrics on this bike to make that better switch gear work. You've got a headlight dip switch relay, you've got a starter relay, and you've got a horn relay that we had to add to the motorcycle. It's still a really nice installation, but having this switch gear changed out is a little bit more complicated than you might think. You'll notice it has a leather seat on it. That came factory from Triumph. We didn't have to change that either. Uh, you've got these covers on the side of the throttle bodies that are made to look like carburetors uh, with the British flag. It's kind of cool. Uh, I'm kind of into that. From there, we went ahead and changed out and did Rizoma rear set foot controls on the left and right side. We went ahead and upgraded to the Rizoma hand grips that are a mixture of rubber and billet aluminum, Moto Gadget bar end mirrors, Moto Gadget bar end turn signals, LSL chain guard upgrade, 
LSL frame sliders is what you might normally call it, but it's essentially an engine protector that mounts really sturdily in case you do go down. And you can see that we clearly uh, cleaned up the tail section of this with a fender eliminator kit. Uh, you know, depending on where you live, this is legal or not legal. For us in Texas, the license plate that is just stuck back here just needs to be somewhat visible, so it's okay to tuck that in. As Americans, we appreciate that, because man, talk about cleaning up the tail section of this bike. You can't even really tell that it has a tail light back there, but it does. Uh, and it, it really looks like a race bike more than a street bike because of it. I can tell you that it sounds good. I've heard the guys riding it, test riding it. I have yet to ride it, but I'm about to. Uh, regardless, stay tuned, let's go for a ride. All right, so we've been riding for a few hours. No, not really. We've been riding for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'd say I kind of want this bike. And since there were only, what, 750 made, I'm not likely to have one. But we could make something like this with a factory Thruxton. Wouldn't take that much work to, to tune it and end up with something quite similar. It just won't have that cool numbered badge on the front. I'm kind of jealous. Brand new motorcycle, already modified, ready to go. Certainly, what else do you want? I mean, not, not much more. Okay, so we're back with the 2020 Triumph Ruxton TFC. Uh, for you guys that don't know, we have a dyno. If you don't know what a dynamometer is, it is a specialized uh, industrial made machine for testing horsepower, torque, power ratings. Essentially, it's a big giant rolling road tuning machine. Through a computer and sensors, it will tell you through an RPM range and a speed range your horsepower and torque numbers for the motorcycle. Now, this can be useful for vintage motorcycles, specifically because you're tuning air fuel ratios and you're tuning a carburetor. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where you fall without a computer kind of helping you out. When it comes to modern bikes like this one with a modern electronically controlled uh, fuel injection, uh, ignition, there's lots of different tuning setups that you can do throughout rev ranges, throughout speed ranges, and even gearing with some to get the most power and the most reliability out of your setup. This bike, we put a DinoJet computer on that is essentially a uh, piggyback computer. It interferes with the signal between the uh, fuel injection setup and the ECU to tune air fuel ratio. So to tell when to give more fuel and less fuel or more ignition curve, less ignition curve, uh, it, it's all pretty, pretty complicated, but much simpler when you have a dyno. This machine like this is between Twenty to thirty thousand dollars to buy one, so it was kind of a big deal when we bought one, uh, and we're still getting used to just how much you can do with it. So Chris Davis and Krant are back here hooking it up. They're hooking it up so they can record and monitor and change the uh, injector duty cycle. Uh, they're going to uh, record and uh, possibly change air fuel ratios, and then of course they're going to tune ignition curve. We'll get a baseline run, see where we fall, and then we'll start to tune from there. Don't know if we'll record all of this because it takes quite a bit of time, but we'll at least show you guys the highlights. So as you guys can see, uh, running on the dyno is pretty anticlimactic. It just revs up really loud, makes a ton of noise, and makes everybody uncomfortable all over the building. Most guys end up making a dyno room that's insulated from sound and, and pushes air through. And this works perfectly fine for us because we don't dyno every day. It might make the neighbors mad, but you know, they're next to a motorcycle shop, so whatever. Unfortunately, we didn't have the plug necessary to hook up to the O2 sensor on this bike, which means we, we're gonna go order some more pieces and parts that we need. Uh, we're also going to order a newer, newer, better wideband O2 sensor because we didn't really want to scratch up the tailpipe by just putting a stick in the tailpipe. And there's different kinds of O2 sensors. There's the, the type that screw into a bung in the pipe, which is what the, the, back, the bike itself uses. And in place of that, you have kind of an adapter plug that allows you to read what the engine is reading. So we don't have a proper air fuel ratio. We had to uh, kind of approximate that. We also had to approximate uh, RPM 
uh, based on uh, dyno speed for, for what we were reading on the tax. So there's some there's a little bit of fudge room here, but we do know that the power numbers are still going to be really specific. So you can see that our power curve is relatively flat. We topped out on one of the runs as two runs. The yellow here is uh, the second run. The orange run was the first run. So the horsepower number peaked out at about 117 horsepower. Um, and our torque number is uh, 93.5 foot-pounds of torque. Factory horsepower for this bike should have been 107 at the crank and 85 foot-pounds of torque. We're up way. You could say that a, a pretty base level uh, approximation would be that this bike is probably running about 125 to 130 horsepower and more than likely closer to 100 foot-pounds of torque. It's being lost through spinning the wheel or through the gearbox. So to go from 107 to possibly 125, 130 is a huge jump. You can attribute that to the piggyback computer uh, to a modified uh, air filter and to uh, pipes and a little bit of tuning. But regardless, that's a ton of horsepower you're going to feel in the seat of the pants. So yeah, uh, the modifications are worth it and obviously having a dyno to be able to know what that number is, is pretty valuable too. So if you guys need a dyno work done here in Austin or uh, ship your bike from anywhere all over the world, uh, you can look forward to seeing more dyno tuning videos, not just for fuel injected bikes, but for carburetor bikes as well. So, as you can see, we're lucky enough to have gotten one of these super rare motorcycles that was made. Maybe one of the first out there that's gotten a pretty good amount of custom work done to it. Uh, it's, in my opinion, it's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing because it still looks like a vintage motorcycle, but it has all the modern upgrades. I think I'd like to talk this client into supercharging it. We'll see. Uh, regardless, you can find pretty much everything that we just showed you on our website for sale. If not, drop us an email. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, set your notifications so you'll know when we have another video coming out. So thanks for watching. Now's the time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever. I'm not going to ask you for that. What I'm going to say to you is, if you want to see more videos and you want to learn more of what we've learned, and you want to see a deep dive into a lot of these topics, go to our website and buy something. We sell everything from motorcycle gear, helmets, uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So. Go to RevivalCycles.com. There's some really good stuff there. Everything from like kick-ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We want to teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.